the past decade and particularly the past few years has been transformative for artificial intelligence. Not so much in terms of what we can do with this technology, it's what we are doing with it. We use AI for so many business applications currently that the list can be endless. My aim is not to talk about its applications, but the way it's currently built or reasoned upon. Since decades now, AI has aroused both fear and excitement as humanity contemplates creating machines which are intelligent in nature. The underlying expectation has been that intelligent artifacts should be human-like artifacts. While the breakthrough is surpassing human ability in chess, translation, searches and the like, it is still very far from understanding human intelligence in totality. A brief history of various advancements in AI in the sending order can be listed as Early 2005, we built what was called expert systems for checking circuit boards and detecting credit card frauds. Similarly, machine learning strategies like genetic algorithms have long been used for intractable computational problems such as scheduling. Neural networks are used not only to model and understand human learning, but also for basic industrial control and monitoring. In the 1990s, probabilistic and Bayesian methods revolutionized ML and opened the door to some of the most pervasive AI technologies now available. Search through massive troves of data. This search capacity included the ability to do the semantic analysis of raw text. Astonishingly, enabling web users to find the documents they seek out of trillions of web pages just by typing only a few words. The goals of AI research so far include reasoning, knowledge representation, planning, learning, natural language processing, perception, and the ability to move and manipulate objects. General intelligence is among the field's long term goals yet. The current approaches include statistical methods, computational intelligence, and traditional symbolic AI, search and mathematical optimization, artificial neural networks, and methods based on statistics, probability, and economics. In fact, the whole artificial intelligence field was founded on the assumption that human intelligence can be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. This has raised philosophical arguments about the mind and the ethics of creating artificial beings endowed with human-like intelligence. Some people consider AI to be a danger to humanity if its progress is unbated. You want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I... Others believe that AI, unlike previous technological revolutions, will create mass unemployment. My context to the AI aspect is entirely different from all the work that has been done by far. I've been working in this industry for quite a few years with the opportunity to work with some of the brightest and genius minds in the industry. However, I have to apologize and say that I feel the understanding of the current AI industry lacks tremendously and we are not even asking the basic questions. I will be addressing such questions and my thought process of human intelligence in this video. Might sound to some like a fictitious concept, but when I add the math in the paper, it'll start to make sense. I hope this video is enticing to the users. The onset of understanding human AI starts with the basic question of what exactly is intelligence. Many people have defined the term intelligence and the one which resonates closely to my research work is something like this. Intelligence is a strict subset of computation, the transformation of information. Note that computation is a physical process. It is not math. It takes time, space and energy. Intelligence is the subset of computation that transforms a context into action. In simpler words, Computation is a physical process, and it's not just basic math. It needs time, space, and energy. On the other hand, intelligence is merely the subset of such computations. But my research understanding extends this knowledge one step further. 
To understand my definition a little more in detail, we will need some understanding of quantum models and computations. These concepts are a little overwhelming to catch up right at the start. So let's start with the basic concept, the duality principle of wave and particle. Wave-particle duality is the concept in quantum mechanics that states, every particle or quantum entity may be described as either a wave or a particle. That is, it exhibits both the properties as a wave and as a particle. Now, is it possible that human me also exists in dual states? That is, as a wave and as a matter as well? A note here, the me aspect is explained in detail in my paper, Artificial Intelligence and Beyond. And the answer is yes. That is the basic underlining aspect of my research work. To understand this, let us take an example of a newborn baby. Newborn baby is supposedly considered the best example to understand how a human brain evolves. When a baby is just born, it knows nothing and needs the training to intelligently communicate. However, this is not entirely correct. The baby already knows how to cry, sleep and dream. How is this happening? The brain was never trained to learn any of these activities. Interesting. Can it be that we have more to humans than we see and compute? Let us now bring in my hypothesis that we humans have two states one in the form of matter and the other in the form of energy. Since we know energy can neither be created nor destroyed, that means it has to manifest from one state or life form to another. This would not be fictitious to tell because we have almost all the concepts in mathematics extending to infinity. If this principle is not for real at all, there's no point in studying about them in calculus, probabilistic models or even on a number line system because the concept in itself is completely flawed. Anyways, again at this point what I'm saying is just a hypothesis, so feel free and negate it. But for argument's sake, I'll consider this hypothesis to be true. So if I say the energy form of the me learns and remembers and transfers its information to the new life form, explains many concepts which include the behavior of many young babies. I would like to draw the attention again to what I just said because this is very important to understand and a little tricky to get hold over to. So if I say the energy form of the me learns and remembers and transfers its information to the new life form explains many concepts which include the behavior of many young babies. A more detailed explanation of this concept is in my paper, Artificial Intelligence and Beyond. So now we understand that there might be a possibility of human me to exhibit in two states. Let's consider the hypothesis to be true for now, since I'm not doing any math at this point in time. So let us now understand how these states look like as per my hypothesis. I have divided the intelligence aspect of me into three quantum states. The outer gross body, the subatomic quantum packet with 18 components being held by the energy form, and the reason quantum state. Let us now apply this understanding to our case of newborn babies. When a baby is born, the brain starts to learn new things as the baby grows. The visible physical body parts and senses work in collaboration with the brain and spinal cord and the baby learns new things, which every one of us ob observe. Whatever new intelligence the kid, a newborn baby is a grown-up kid now, has acquired is now passed on to subatomic quantum packet state, which is born by the energy state of me and the memory is built. That means whatever the physical body is learning, with the help of brains and the sensory organs, it gets transferred to the subatomic quantum states, which is holding the packets together in the energy form. This memory keeps building over a period of infinite lifetimes and is held together 
by the energy quantum state of me. That is why you see that with the same set of organs and almost similar training data set, every human being is so different and has very different potential abilities. Some have extraordinary ability to learn new things. Some have extraordinary abilities to do other activities really well and so on. This state is further improvised by the current actions and training that happens in the current life state of me, which is then passed to the quantum state of me. There is one more state here which keeps getting updated because of the subtle memory of quantum energy me, which is the reason quantum state. The default objective of the reason quantum state is set to happiness. If I have to represent this in the form of equation goal, it becomes Z happiness equals reason 1, reason 2 can be multiple reasons. For some reason, which I'll discuss later, the Z equation value of the reason quantum state is set for happiness for all the beings in the universe, be it animals, be it birds, be it we humans, everyone in default, by default, wants happiness. However, the values or reasons differ depending upon the memory of the subatomic quantum energy body, which is because of the way the brain has been trained because of the actions done over the past many lives. I'd like to grab our attention again to something which I said, which is very crucial and important. Let me say it over again. The values or reasons differ depending upon the memory of the subatomic quantum energy body, which is because of the way the brain has been trained, because of the actions done over the past many lives. So everyone, every being in this whole wide, wide world universe is looking for happiness, which is the reason quantum state transition value. But the reasons to get their happiness differs for every single individual. And this is because in the past many lifetimes, they've been doing certain actions and have trained their brains, which has built up their subatomic quantum energy me. And so the definition of happiness varies from person to person. So the me energy state updates itself with the actions and reasons which gives happiness to the reason quantum state where it is stored. So in the current lifetime, you can always update it with your actions, whatever the cross body does, then it gets transmitted to the quantum energy state of the me which remembers and then this is getting updated in the reason quantum state which keeps updating what are the different reasons which is making the energy state happy and so that keeps on getting updated that is why some people have figured out the why reason for their birth and really enjoy some activities and some are still searching changing the actions they are doing in the current lifetime thereby passing this understanding to the subatomic quantum transition state of me which updates the reason in the recent quantum transition state of me being held by the energy wavelet so for a musician, happiness is in music and that his or her why because they are born just to sing, just to produce music. For some, it is studies. For some, it is dancing. And for many of us, we are still not sure about what it is. So we are trying out new things, learning new activities, then passing this information to our quantum states and then the reason state gets updated accordingly. So if we were to consider this hypothesis to be true, I know it's a little tricky to understand because we're talking about multiple lifetimes and then the learning passing over from one lifetime to the other. And then we're just saying things which has not been proven yet, but that is what my paper is all about to prove the mathematical mathematical verification of something that I just said. So I hope everyone would want to read that. And the questions 
that can be solved if we think this hypothesis is true includes why do we dream and who is actually dreaming? Why are some people really good at the reason quantum state than many others who are still searching for the purpose? Though we all share the final goal that is happiness, which is, you know, a hard-coded entry in itself, which I wonder nobody of us is asking. Why do we all want happiness? Why is that default hard-coded entry? So this explains that too. Why do all beings want happiness and even animals without reaching or going to school know so much on their own? The theory of infinity and beyond, the numeric system, system of calculus and process rules, series, in fact all mathematical concepts extending the concept of infinity gets covered if we consider this to be true. Why are we all equal because we have all the same energy store, source state and it's only the outer body transformation. So that's the philosophical aspect of life which I never like to get into. So let's just skip that part. But I still added it because yeah, we're all equal. The cycle of what you sow is what you reap gets justified too. Weird behavior patterns of animals can be also explained because of this phenomenon. So I've discussed much more about this in my paper, which I will be publishing soon. Um, I will notify the upload on my YouTube channel and my website. This video was just a very small overview to raise interest for users to check out the paper itself. So I hope you guys will go ahead and take the time to check the paper because this has been the work of quite a few years. And... It's very different as a concept to understand, which I understand. But when you see the math and when you put in the pieces together, close your eyes and then just try figuring it out, I think it all makes sense. So in case, again, if you are interested to discuss this hypothesis further and have any questions, if something is not very clear, feel free to get in touch. And thank you.